Let's just join our hand, heads in prayer, join our hands in prayer, and thank God for this service. God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for change. We thank you for showing us new ways to worship, and I ask that you would just be with us in this place tonight as we create an atmosphere of worship for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we've got a new song for you tonight, and uh, this one is, is called Speechless, and have you ever had that moment where you just felt that you were just embraced in, in awe of the presence of God? And that's really what this song is going to talk to us tonight.
anybody thankful for? For the amazing grace. The grace that brought us a mighty long way. Are you thankful for the love of Jesus? It's never failing, no, no. Donna, help me sing. Grace, Lord, your grace. Oh, I need it. I receive it. I'm amazed, so amazed. It's your grace, Lord, your grace, oh, I need it, I receive it, I'm amazed, so amazed, when I see it, I am speechless, oh, God, you take my breath away, you take my breath away. Before we go into the next song, doesn't it just feel good in this house tonight? Yes. Yes. This is what church is supposed to feel like. You're supposed to be free to worship however you choose. And I'm just thankful that tonight we're focusing on the fact that it doesn't always have to be loud. It doesn't always have to be this fast-paced world that we live in. But sometimes we can just take a step back, catch our breath, and breathe. Alarm clock screaming, man, he hit the floor It's off to the races, everybody out the door So much to do in so little time It's a crazy life 90 miles an hour, but it's so hard to see that I've only got time for me, me, me. So much to do in so little time, it's a crazy life. It's ready, set, go for another wild day. When the stress is on the rise in my heart, I hear you say, just breathe, just breathe, come and rest. And my feet and be just be chaos calls, but all you really need is to just breathe, just breathe. Cup of joe just to get me through the day and where it's all been and how it slipped away So much to do in so little time It's a crazy life I'm busy, busy, busy And it's too hard to see That I've only got time for me, me, me So much to do in so little time It's a crazy life It's ready, set, go It's another wild day Stress is on the rise in my heart. I hear you say, just breathe, just breathe. Come and rest at my feet and be just be the chaos calls, but all you really need. 
is to take it in, feel your lungs, the peace of God that overcomes. Just breathe. Let your weary spirit, so let your weary spirit rest. Get down what's good and find what's best. Just God for the breath that is in our lungs. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this place on this night. We could be anywhere else right now, but you have us right here in this very moment for this very experience. And somebody in this place needs to know that it will calm down. There's a verse in Psalms where God said, I will quiet the noise of the flood. I will quiet the noise and the chaos of all that's in this world. I cast my eyes on Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior, all that cursed tree. His body bound, sing it with us, and drenched in tears, they laid him down in joy. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Sing it out. Oh, praise the name forevermore for endless days. He will sing. Game. 
is transfixed on Jesus' face. Does that excite anybody in this place? Come on, does it excite anybody in this place that you can sing this today? Being convinced that you will get there too? And this isn't just for those who are in the know, who are perfect and have it all together, but we can sing about that resurrection day knowing that us people in the margins are included in that very number. Somebody lift up a shout of praise. God, we are humbled. We are humbled that you're a God of second chances. We stand in awe of you. We stand speechless, knowing that every one of us could have made a different turn, or even the turn that we made wasn't right, but somehow our steps were ordered and they still got us back to this very place. We thank you for that tonight. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this body and this family. And we thank you for the word that is about to come to us. We ask that you would just let our hearts be open to receive whatever it is that you have for the rest of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me in giving God a hand praise this night? Now, before we get into the word, who's got a praise tonight? Who's got a praise on their heart this night? Come on, you can shout it out at me. I want to know what's on your heart this night. What's your praise this night? Okay, you're better than that. Come on, Val, give us a praise. Amen. What a testimony. Anybody else got a praise this night? Come on, I know that there's lots of praises around here. Go on, Jeff, and then we're going to... Absolutely. What a wonderful way in which we can get built up ready for worship this evening. Let's thank God for those who bring their voice as a gift of talent. Give God a hand praise. Yeah, let's give God a hand praise. I saw your, your hand go up. Amen. Okay, come on. This side's, this side's taking all the glory. What's going on over on this side of the church this night? Who's got a hand praise? 
Want to just give God a hand praise? Want to just thank God for this evening? I think that that is a wonderful way in which we get to express our worship just by offering God our praise and our adoration. And I know that there are other people who've got needs on their hearts this evening, but I believe that when God gave us that model prayer, that we exalt the name of God first, and it's out of that place of praise, out of that place of gratitude, out of that place of acclaiming God within our lives, that everything else flows. So I think it's honest that we should always proclaim the name of Jesus and to give God thanks as we come to worship, everything else flows from that place. I invite you to uh, turn to your bulletin for me and uh, just hear the word from Scripture this evening. It's uh, from Psalm 46, it's from the Hebrew text, and it's from the Message Translation. It says this, God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when in need. We stand fearless at the cliff edge of doom, courageous in sea storm and earthquake. Who could have asked for a better word this evening with Hurricane Michael heading into uh, America? Before the rush and roar of oceans, the tremors that shift mountains, Jacob wrestling God fights for us. God of angel armies protects us. River fountains splash joy, cooling God's city, this sacred haunt of the Most High. God lives here. The streets are safe. God at your service from crack of dawn. Godless nation rant and rave, kings and authorities threaten, but earth does, any, does anything God says. Jacob wrestling God for us, God of angel armies protect us. Attention all, see the marvels of God. God plants flowers and trees all over the earth, bans war from pole to pole, breaks all the weapons across the knee. Step out of the traffic. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics. Oh, there's another word for us this night. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. Jacob, wrestling God, fights for us. God of angel armies protects us. Join your hearts and minds with mine as we ask God to bless this word this night. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Spirit. You three in one, one in three, express to us in those ways and more. Be with us as we worship you, as we acknowledge your presence in our lives, in this earth, in this church, and in this community. And help us as we begin this new series of the habits of happiness, to think beyond just those conventional things that perhaps the world has thrown at us, but those God-angel armies that are surrounding us this night, protecting us, drawing close to us, being near with us, so that we might know the presence of a Holy One beyond the noise of the world and deep, deep within our own spirit and soul. And so, God, as you have opened us now, open my words and open my lips. Touch them this night in the words of clay, that they may be molded into the words that you would have spoken to us this night. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. I want to tell you, I love the way that Reverend Erin preaches. Uh, when she gets up to preach, it's like you're in a seminar. It's like you're in a, a, a teaching experience that Erin is able to take the Word of God and to breathe new life into it. She's not here this evening because she's over at the Interfaith Peace Chapel. And we are having two worship services this night. Uh, we're having Pulse here in our main sanctuary. And over in the Interfaith Peace Chapel, we're having a new worship service called Reflect. Um, it's a monthly meditative, reflective service in the style of Taze. And for those of you who don't know who, what Taze is, Taze is a place in France. Um, it's a place that was uh, founded by a group of, of monks, a group of brothers, um, who gathered uh, to bring together a centered place of prayer that people travel to from all over the world. They go there from all over the world on pilgrimages. Uh, they go there for healing. They go there for reflection. They go there for prayer. They go there in order that their soul might be fed. And uh, if you've never attended one of those Teze services, or was, we're now calling it Reflect in the style of Teze, because it's going to introduce Celtic um, elements into the worship experience and time for meditation. If you've never experienced one of those, I'm going to invite you to do that. They're happening on the first Wednesday of every month. Now, that means that for three other Wednesdays, you can still be in Pulse. Um, but you can try it out, and I want to encourage you to do that, especially as we think about this sermon series. 
Our reading came from the book of Psalms. Now, if you've ever looked at the book of Psalms, it's in the uh, Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures. And uh, the book of Psalms is divided up into five different books. It's not just one book. um, It's five different books. And they track, if you will, um, David's relationship with God and David's own journey with God. David, we understand, wrote the book of Psalms, although I don't think David wrote all 150. Uh, But we attribute them to David. And we attribute them to David, who was a shepherd, a shepherd boy. And uh, he was, uh, uh, his experience of life and his experience of worship was perhaps radically different from ours. Um, David was out in the fields um, and watching the sheep. Um, well, I don't know what you do when you watch sheep, but David was out there watching the sheep. Um, it was a very lonely existence. And in those days, um, the, 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 the hills where the, where the sheep were reared um, was outside the city gates. Now, you need to understand that when you're outside the city gates, you're outside the protection of the community. If you've ever looked back in history, you will see that all of the cities were surrounded by these city gates, and Jerusalem was, was like that. They were surrounded by city gates, um, and in the middle of the city, there was a town square where everyone gathered, um, but you never ventured outside of the city gates at night. It was too dangerous. Um, it wasn't like today where we've got police to uh, take care of us. Um, it was a, certainly a more dangerous place. And you can imagine that David, as he was out tending the sheep and watching them, he had a lot of time to contemplate his navel. Oh, to be blessed today, to have a lot of time to contemplate life. Now, some of us might not want to contemplate life because it's uh, uh, perhaps in a a place of disarray right now, but but the truth is that David found his happiness, his calling. He found his vocation. He found time to be able to think about his life and to think about his relationship with God. And believe me, if you're out there at night on your own, um, the only thing you can rely on is God. I think David teaches us a valuable lesson. I think David reminds us that even in the midst of the busynesses of our lives, even in the midst of our own crisis, even in the midst of our own joys, sometimes we need to take a break away and just be in the presence of God. How many of us would love that luxury of being able to just be in the presence of God? Sometimes the noise of the world is just too much. You see, the the habits of happiness is not just being surrounded by people, not just about being surrounded by people who love you. It's not just about being in in the hullabaloo of life. Sometimes the habits of people who have found true happiness is by taking a break away and listening to God listening to that still small voice. Now, if you've ever read this psalm, Psalm 46 and another interpretation, um, you will know that that last few verses of the psalm begin with, be still and know that I am God. I I love Eugene Patterson's take on some of these scriptures, Uh, but the original, the, the writer, especially in the New International Version, reminds us that in order for us to seek happiness in our life, and happiness is not just this emotion that you, know, you walk around with a big smile on your face all the time, even when you're feeling miserable. Uh, we know people like that um, who are extremely lonely or extremely uh, broken away from society, um, and they put on this great big mask because they don't want people to know what's really going on in their lives. Uh, perhaps we've been one of those in the past. Perhaps we're one of those today. But what what the reminder of the psalm says to us is that we need to sometimes be still and know that I am God. That be still in the in the in the chaos of life, in, in the feelings of, of being unsafe, in the in the feelings of being bombarded by, by everything that's happening in our world this day. And you know, on a Sunday we in our pastoral prayer times, we take uh, an opportunity sometimes to to pray through all of the things that are happening in the world. Some people say it's like the Reader's Digest version of what's going on today. But, but seriously, it is about thinking about all of the things that are going on in our world. That sometimes when we are just in the middle of being bombarded, it's an opportunity for us to find a habit of happiness and to hear the words of David and others, but David this night who invites us to be still and know that I am God. That, that, that in the midst of everything, God is still present, that there is safety in the presence of God. Sometimes we feel unsafe in the presence of others, but David reminds us that there is safety, safety for us in the presence of God. 
I, I know that many of us could perhaps have paired testimony to the ways in which God has prepared our hearts and minds and who has enabled us to feel safe when, when everything else feels unsafe around us. If we could just find a time to break away and to be still and know that I am God. I think that those are words of great wisdom for us this night. To think about what's going to happen in six weeks or seven weeks and we're, we're all going to wake up and we're going to have a new president, we're going to have a new government, whatever that looks like. I don't know about you, but there's going to be a moment in my life where I'm just going to be still and know that God is still God. <laughs> that God is still on the throne. And that whilst kings and authorities, hear what David said to us tonight, even though kings and authorities might, might thwart us with all sorts of, of, of stuff in the world, we can find our safety in God. And we can find our safety in God's people. We can surround ourselves with people who share our values. We can surround ourselves with people who want to nurture us. We can surround ourselves with people who take care of us. But in order for us to find true, deep happiness, in order for us to, to find that place of, of grace within us, each and every one of us has to find time to be still and know that God is God to be still in the midst of everything that surrounds us and to find that centeredness of God's presence in our lives. You know, just recently, um, Sophia has started daycare and uh, we have a new regime in our house. Um, the regime is that um, I'm up at, uh, well actually the whole household is up at 6.30 at the very latest and by 7.15 we're on the road because we have to get Sophia to daycare. And um, this is the first week um, that she is uh, doing daycare. First day went pretty well. Uh, second day wasn't quite so good. Um, the second day all the way from our house um, into uh, Oak Lawn, which usually is a 20 minute journey, um, took 45 minutes in rush hour traffic. Um, and she was determined that she was gonna break my silence. Uh, she cried. I want to tell you, this is hard stuff. She cried, well, and you know, those of you who know me, I'm British, so I have a stiff upper lip, nothing really phases me. Um, I, you know, I have two tears that I shed the whole year, because um, that's as much as Brits are allowed to shed. Um, but I want to tell you, she, she cried from the minute we left the house until we got to the daycare and beyond that experience. I tell you, anyone who's been a parent know handing over your child uh, to somebody else and watching her cry as you're kind of leaving out the door and she's like, oh, it is not easy. Um, so we have this new regime. And uh, before I would, I would uh, usually take my journey into, uh, into church to, to pray, uh, to meditate. To, to think about the day, to check my calendar, um, and sometimes even check my email, but I don't do that on the road. <laughs> Not like everybody else, right? How many people see drivers and they've got one phone in here and another phone up here and wondering who on earth is driving the car? Um, but there's a whole new regime, and so I've had to think about for myself, where, what, how can I now find that moment of be still and know that I am God. That if I, if I don't do that as a spiritual practice, I'm not sure where my day is going to go. Uh, because it's really important for me, and I hope for others, to find themselves finding that place of centeredness at the very beginning of the day. So that we can be still and know that God is God. And no matter what the day might, might hold for us, no matter what might be thrown at us, if we could center ourselves in that place of God, I believe that that is a habit of happiness. That everything has to be grounded, everything has to be centered in who God is and what we know God to be. D David knew that when he was out on the hill and there was nobody else to protect him. The only thing that could protect him from, 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 from walls and, and from, from, from animals that might, might come and, and take the sheep away from him at night. You know, he would lo lose income if a sheep was taken out of that, out of that herd. That the only thing that could protect him was God. As people of faith, we need to also know that, that the only thing that really protects us from all of the stuff that goes on around the world is, is grounding ourselves in that place and that name of Jesus, place, placing ourselves in the surrender of God. So I've begun new rituals, and uh, now I usually get to the office about 8.30 in the morning, 
And uh, there are several people already here. Um, before, when I was to get here, I would uh, get my, my, my coffee and I would basically walk the halls and uh, say hello to everybody. No, I was not checking that all the staff were in. Um, I would just go and say good morning to everybody. And now what I've, just, what I've been doing is I get to my office and I keep my door shut and I go through some rituals in order that I can ground myself uh, ready for the day. Now, that doesn't make me any better than anybody else. It's just a ritual that I've discovered in my own breakaway right at the very beginning of the day. And you know, sometimes I get time to repeat that a little bit later, but most of the time I don't. It's usually just like many, many other people. We go from one thing to the next. Uh, our calendars and our schedules are just so full. Um, but grounding myself, grounding each and every one of us in that place of being of taking a break away just from the world, just for a moment. Uh, last Sunday, I think I said that we should uh, take a sabbatical from Facebook. And, uh, you know, wouldn't that be a blessing? We just can't do it. It's just not, not in our DNA right now. But uh, um, our HR manager, Kim Oglesley, she came to me on Monday morning and she said, you know, I heard your sermon. And she said, uh, I've decided that I'm not going to use Facebook. She's created her own thing. She said, I've called it Faithbook. And she has now got this little pad next to her desk. And every time she uh, thinks of something that is about an expression of faith, she writes it in her Facebook. And uh, she's created this new news feed and a new wall in her own office where she is beginning to think about uh, taking a break away in the midst of everything else, just even it's for a minute, to place ourselves back into that safety of our sovereign God. Just to put ourselves back, perhaps put ourselves back in check. I believe, sisters and brothers, that as we think about those habits of happiness, when I look at great spiritual leaders around the world, one of the things that I find about them is that they have taken time to really take a break away from everything else, all the decisions that we have to make, to take that break away. And like the, like the psalmist David, say that there is no other safe place but with you, to be still and know that I am God. I believe that if we could do that, if we could really just take a moment to be still and know that I am God, that when we have things that we need to ask God, we've created a space, a place of listening where God can respond to us. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't respond to us in other ways, but I think sometimes we need to have that intentional moment where we can pause and allow God to speak to us. Because we're so often bombarding God with requests. You know, do this, do that. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Let's be honest. We're often bombarding God with requests. But if we could just create some space to be still and know that I am God, to take a break away and actually hear, give space for the voice of God to speak to us, perhaps then we could actually make decisions that will lead us to these habits of happiness that will lead us again and again down that road that is safe, that road that is protected by this God that we know, this road that, that David, the psalmist, knew every single day that he was putting himself in danger. And out of that, he sang praise. Out of that, he gave thanks. Out of that, he just allowed God to be God and knew who he was in relationship with this divine Sisters and brothers, none of us are God. None of us can claim to be God. But we can claim the presence of God if we would allow ourselves that luxury. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's a necessity, not a luxury. A necessity every so often just to take a break away and to pursue happiness by listening to that voice of God that speaks to each and every one of us if we would but create that space to allow God to speak to us today. So I'm going to encourage you as we continue in this series of sermons, you'll see we're breakaway, serving, detox, connecting, generosity, growing and giving, lots and lots of things to get through. But I pray that we might build a foundation right now as we begin this new sermon series on Wednesday nights to take a moment every day, perhaps it's the beginning of the day, perhaps it's the middle of the day, perhaps it's at the end of the day, but to stop for a moment to be still and know that I am God and allow God to direct our path and allow God to protect us 
and allow God to be God and us to be us and allow that pursuit of happiness, the habits of happiness, as we allow in those moments to give God thanks, to give God our praise, and to give God time to speak to us in that still small voice that I truly believe God does speak to us if we but create that space in order for God to get through the noise of the world in which we live. I invite you to practice it. The habits of happiness mean that we have to practice something in order to see if it works, right? We have to practice it because then it becomes a habit. People say that if you do things three times, it can become a habit. So I'm going to challenge me and you to perhaps practice some of these habits and see how our lives are changed as we practice this pursuit and this habit of happiness to create a space for God to speak. Friends and sisters and brothers, let's be still and know that I am God. Not right now, perhaps, because we've got music coming up and we're going to be dancing and happening around. And God can speak in that too. But let's make some space and some intention in our lives to be still and know that I am God and use these words of David to protect us and lift us and liberate us and see where happiness comes out of it. To God be the glory. Amen, Amen Cathedral of Hope. Amen. What a great message tonight. We have a lot of ways to connect and grow here at Cathedral of Hope. We're here to help you on your spiritual journey. Along with breaking away and hearing silence, I want to point out a few things uh, in addition to that um, to help cultivate your spiritual growth. There is on the back of your bulletin a uh, blessing bag shopping list. We're inviting people to bring these items to bring and build bags next week that we can hand out to homeless people that we run into as we are driving around the city of Dallas. I know I run into quite a few that I'd love to be able to give something like this to. So that's one way that you can grow spiritually is by giving back to others. Um, the young adults actually are uh, starting back up and they have a get together October 23rd, 1 p.m. at Cedar Springs Tap House. If you're a 20 something or if you're a 30 something, we invite you to come check it out, come hang out, uh, enjoy some food and drink uh, after church on the 23rd. Or if you're a 20 something who dates a 40 something, it's okay for the 40 something to come along. That's a good point. Yes, right. <laughs> Do, you, do we know anybody that does that? I'm just, I'm no, just okay, all right. I didn't okay. want to, ex we want to be inclusive. That's good, yeah. <laughs> also want to make you aware of, um, I don't know how to transition out of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, just gonna go on and ignore it. Um, also wanted to point out that this Sunday we have a town hall meeting. Um, sorry, Saturday. Um, I meant Saturday, 11 a.m. Um, just want to encourage you all to come out. It's a business meeting of our church. It's important as people that attend here and our members here to know what's going on in the life of the church. Um, I know growing up, business meetings weren't my favorite thing to go to, but these are pretty cool, so come check it out. Uh, and then one other thing, um, actually two more things. Membership class is coming up um, October 16th. I went through it in July. It's great. You don't have to become a member. You can just come and check it out and see if it's something that becoming a member here might be of interest to you. So we invite you to sign up for that and uh, check it out. Um, last thing is uh, on the 18th of October, we're doing a coming out workshop. Uh, you don't have to be LGBT to go to that. Um, it's helpful if you're LGBT. It explores the process of coming out for yourself, your family, your friends, your work. Um, and it's also helpful for those who, um, who are family members of somebody who's LGBT and they need to know um, guidance on walking the coming out process with them because when someone comes out, it's not just that person coming out, it's the family as well. So we invite you to check that out as well. And we're gonna continue on now with worship and giving back with our tithes and offerings, the final thing that I'm gonna mention. Um, these ministries that are here at Cathedral of Hope wouldn't be possible without your financial support. So we invite you now to give back as you are able.
We also want to ask you to get that red pad at the end of your pew, fill it out, give us your information, and um, let us know what you think of tonight's service and all that we do around here. Just put a nice little smiley face and say you love us, and that'll be really good. <laughs> the verse that Neil kept repeating tonight, be still and know that I am God. It's actually one of my favorite verses. I'm not a big Bible scholar, but I love to take it. I'm not sure if you're supposed to edit the word of God, but I take it and I say, be still and know the period or be still and know and fill in the blank. Be still and know that God will provide. Be still and know. And not, sometimes you remember you must have to wait on God. And it's a beautiful thing to wait on God, but know that God will be faithful. Waiting here 
just sing it with us. And it's you we adore, singing hallelujah. And I surrender busyness of this life. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Sing that one more time. spaces within our lives and as we go out into this world I invite you to create that space so that you might take a break away in gratitude so as we finish our service this evening we want to remind you that communion is offered to each and every one of you this night at the end of worship you're invited over to the uh, prayer chapel where there will be servers ready and waiting to feed you with communion and also to pray with you this night if you have a special need on your heart that perhaps has been stirred by worship this evening, we don't want you to leave without connecting and to allow the God that we know to fill you and to surround you with great power. Remember, of course, Pulse Cafe is here this night and we invite you into the fellowship hall. If this is your first time with us, know that we have a gift for you and that there will be people at the table that want to welcome you and say thank you for being here and to get to know you just a little bit better. So if you decide to come to communion or you decide to go to Pulse Cafe, know that there will also be people coming over from the Reflect service also to join us. Reach out to one another. Let's connect in new and exciting and bold ways, ways so that this place of radical inclusion is an invitation to those that we know as well as those that we don't know. Communion is served in many different ways, whether it be over here or whether it be in Pulse Cafe or whether it be in the fellowship time with others. Because communion really is about connecting with the God that is already with us and invites you and I now to allow that God out of our own boxes and into the world. So go this night in peace and help us, O oh God, to love one another as God has already demonstrated love for us. Amen.